No, it's all good. I'm, no, no, I'm recording. Uh, I'm good on the Zoom. I didn't record. <laughs> We're about to see Mad Botter. <laughs> Mad oh Man gosh. Botter. Oh, oh, I always sit in All right. Hello, hello. One, two, three. Oh, I've only ever seen it once. <laughs> all right. I should be synced up on the Zoom. Um, Ashley, and see if you guys will clap on the count of three. One, two, three. Thank you for waking my child. <laughs> oh, <Wee>! no. <laughs> Guess throwing some more of Rose. <laughs> okay, so for our video listeners, uh, I'm not going to redo that intro. Just be- just listen to the audio version. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> good catch, Ashley. Damn. Whew. Wow. I know we record. It's the heat wave. Yeah. <laughs> good yeah. catch. Uh, let me. I'm like, I'm not redoing this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let me just... He's uh, already sweating. I guess for the video podcast, I'm just going to jump in right uh, in my yeah. introductions. All right, well, let me do that, that <laughs> la- one part uh, once again. Uh, I want to play... I want to play count the minutes of how long Ashley's straight hair starts to... Oh, yeah. Curlier and curlier. <laughs> for those of you tuning in, Ashley has made a big sacrifice when you consider it is late May in Florida of all days. She has turned off her AC mm. to ensure... Pristine yeah, audio AC quality. setting is on Mustafar. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> All right, let me do that again. <laughs> if you're tuning in for the first time, welcome to the show. My name is Bader Milligan, and I will take sole responsibility for that very awkward and janky ass uh, segue and intro. But I am joined. Very big of you. We will I let appreciate you. that. See, I was hoping that I'd get the cosign from you of all people. <laughs> I am joined by a much more capable short box crew, and I'm very thankful I've got this squad so I can ride their coattails. In the studio with me is Edmund Danzart, hey. a.k.a. the EdBot 5000. What's up? What's up, Ed? How you doing today? Good, man. Good. Looking good, brother. Looking oh, good. Appreciate it. Calling in on mic number two is Ashley Lanny Hoy. What's up, Ashley? Uh, not much. All right. <laughs> <laughs> same old, same old. I like it, Ashley. I like it. <laughs> Also on the big screen, calling in oh. and rounding out our panel today mm-hmm. is our favorite new dad, Cesar Cordero. What up, Papa Cordero? Yo, what up? What up? Yo, I'll tell you what's up, man. I got three phones, man. Two for the hoes and one for the Lord. You know what I'm saying, dog? <laughs> this will be the episode I show your baby when she's at, to the proper age. It ain't easy being greasy, son. <laughs> I'm on the fourth floor. <laughs> Damn, are you a pimp today? Pimp named Cordero? <laughs> pimp named Cesar? You got to say it in a whole. It's a pimp named, named Slickback. Yeah. Pimp named Slickback. Pimp named C, the whole thing. All right. <laughs> that's all right. We're all feeling pretty jovial today. I like that. I like that. I have no sleep, Potter. I, I'm seeing so, things. I saw Doctor Strange. Oh no. My parents watched Sammy for a couple hours, so Sarah and I got a chance to do a little date night, and uh, I am... I, I, I don't know what day it is i don't i forgot math it's podcast day dude nothing else matters baby come on now happy to have you back brother dude i'm so it's easily under the powers of butter (laughs) suggested he was like (laughs) creeped on my bed like you will show up tomorrow (laughs) now i i I will show up i'd like to think it's it's the topic at hand today is what got you out of uh uh, a vacation or a maternity leave divorce (laughs) no the hours (laughs) All right, but look, but before we get into the, the main topic, I do want to say that much like all of our previous Artist Spotlight episodes, the subject of today's show was selected by our Patreon subscribers. I'm going to give them a round of applause. Uh, Ed came up with the theme and the potential candidates, and then our patrons took care of the rest. Ed, did you foresee that the Alreds would be tying with Frank Miller and Lynn Varley? You also had um, the Dotsons, Terry yeah. and Rachel Dotson, on the poll as well. I am surprised. I thought it would be uh, Frank Miller and uh, Lynn Varley. I was not expecting, because you said it was a pretty wide victory, right? Or was it closer? No, it was. I mean, like uh, no, it was a um, uh, Mike and Laura Alred tied with Frank Miller and Lynn Varley. Oh, that's right, that's right. And okay. they they beat out the Dotsons uh, pretty significantly. But um, but we made the executive decision last episode. We were going to go with the Alreds to break the tiebreaker because we've yeah. already spent some time. I feel like we spent a lot of time talking about Frank Miller uh, on this show, yeah. so we want to put a spotlight on a different uh, comic book couple. And I think, you know, when you consider, like, you know, the theme was highlighting popular and famous and impactful yeah. And they're com- still couples. together. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and they're still together. <laughs> that might have been there is that. a big reason. There is that. There is and that. Since we're on the topic of the people who help us keep the lights on, I want to shout out a new patron that made the smartest financial decision of his whole life. Let's go ahead and give a warm welcome to our newest Patreon subscriber, Henry Hernandez. What up, Henry? 
Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Your money. Ugh. Oh, pristine. Are these new bills? What? Are these new bills? That's so weird. What is like that? Scrooge what is that you're doing? That tank. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, Henry wrote uh, a, a nice message uh, to us as well. Read it here. He j- it's very short. He wrote, yellow, short box. Cheers from Puerto Rico. What? Happy to have found the po- I did that for a second. So. Happy to have found the podcast during lockdown in the pandemic. Enjoying it since day one. Nice. Blessings as wow. always. Awesome. Shout outs to wow. Henry, man. Welcome to the short. Hey, yo, week. shout outs to you. Shout out, Henry. Yeah, man. I'll take them blessings, bro. Champagnes all You're around. Right your voice. That was really gritty. <laughs> what you do? Eat a pile of rocks? Bro, I be eating all these rhymes up, dog. That's what I'm trying to tell you right now. I got to eat up all these bad reviews, dog. You don't know. You don't see it on the streets. Damn, I, it's been a minute since we got a uh, uh, street C on this mm. show. Yo, they call me They call me Amit, Ooh. son. All right, Amit. Well, let's go. Well, Amit. Kiss the well, cane, Amit. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> well, Amit, help me go ahead and, and give a... Uh, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, everyone. Yeah, no apologies necessary. <laughs> Help me go ahead and give an honorable mention and shout outs to uh, fellow patrons uh, like Corey Torgerson, Hydraberg, and Jimmy G for joining Ooh. our new our new oh. True Believer tier. It's, it's a tier that we, we made this month. Uh, you can get everything we have to offer for seven bucks a month. I'm talking mm. early access to episodes before everyone else. Uh, mm, I'm sorry. Bargain yes. at twice the price. Delicious. Access to the video version <laughs> of this podcast. We want to see our ugly mugs. Mm. <laughs> and... You can also get, uh, and you also get a short box welcome package filled with comics and merch, and even my kitchen sink for the price of one prestige format comic. All right, mm. you, you're getting everything we have to offer. You can check it out for yourself and part with your money in the name of the short box and Cesar's daughters, Cesar's daughters college fund uh-huh. by going to patreon.com slash the short box. There's a link to that in our show notes if you want to check it out while you continue listening. We want your money, all right? Help us out. Help us keep this thing going. Uh, big shout out, like I said, to Corey, Hyderberg, and Jimmy G for being a part of that new uh, Patreon tier. Absolutely, man. Yeah, peace is the absence of confusion, dog. You <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> see, uh, see uh, bump it down just a little bit. Bump what down? These sweet ass fucking uh, yeah. <laughs> beats of wisdom I'm dropping on your ass. <laughs> thank you, SZA. Peace to all the gods thank of the you, earth. Thank man. you, SZA. CZA. <laughs> the lost brother. The lost brother of the Wu-Tang. <laughs> SZA. <laughs> all right. This is the worst. Smart. That's your name, bro. I can't help it. I mean, that's SZA. what you grew up with, right? I guess. Smart business advice aside, we'll actually get to talking about the Al Reds. And this is where I'm going to turn it over to see to give a, a crash course on, on Mike and Laura if you're new to the to, to them or, or, you know, you're not familiar with their work. See, what, what you got to say? Uh-oh. Hold on a second. My computer's acting silly. Oh, good. You know what the best part about this is that it's video. Ooh, riveting. <laughs> yeah. Technical difficulties. Yeah, guys. this is why Sorry. I label it the behind the scenes of the recording, right? You see all the good. This is this is the worst part. Nobody wants nah, to see bro, this. I'm telling you, they they love because <laughs> we have to be on. <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah, this is a hit. It drop them. Go ahead and t- toss toss all it right, to me right, one more time, it. man. All right, smart business advice aside, we'll actually get to talking about the all reds, and this is where I'm going to turn it over to C. All right, C's going to go ahead and give you guys that might not be familiar with the with, with the long. Uh, with the impactful work of Mike and Laura. Thank you for yeah. finishing that. <laughs> <laughs> With the long, strong, like to get the friction on career of the Allreds. <laughs> dope rhymes, SZA. So dope rhymes. <laughs> but if you're unfamiliar with the, uh, with, oh, damn it, I'm sorry. With the work of Mike, I can't, now I can't stop thinking about that weird ass rhyme. And your noodle neck, <laughs> your fucking noodle, noodle neck is fucking me up. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> If you, they call me Mr. Boombastic, son. If you're unfamiliar with the work <laughs> of Mike and Laura Alred, this is where C's going to give you that crash course. So even if you're not familiar with them, you know, you, you can still follow along. But I highly suggest, you know, uh, whether it be during this episode or even after, go on Google and just type in Mike and Laura Alred and, and just treat your eyeballs to the amazing uh, illustrations and artwork that they've uh, brought into the world. See, I'll toss it to you. Sure. So like you said, if you're not really familiar with these people, uh, Mike Alred is a multi-award winning comic book artist. And he's really more or less famous for his independent creations like uh, Madman. Um, iZombie was, you know, um, put out by uh, DC. 
Vertigo, and, yeah, um, specifically. He owns right, that. specifically Vertigo. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> Uh, he's also received an infinite amount of recognition and praise for his work on DC's uh, Batman 66, namely the covers. Um, you might know his work from Marvel's uh, Ecstatics, Silver Surfer, and his series with the Fantastic Four. In addition, uh, there's a lot more. I mean, like, I think Ed and I, and I, I think Ashley too, if, um, if you're familiar with the movie Chasing Amy, mm. he makes a cameo, and it's probably my favorite Mike Alred appearance Um <laughs> He's like literally like within the first five minutes of the movie, yeah. you'll you'll see it's like him. Chow Yun Fat. Um, I never thought of him as Mad Men. <laughs> right, right. I like him. He's like I love Chow Yun Fat too, but I don't know if he's a good. I don't really see him as Mad Men. You know, it's, it's perfect. Um, he, you know, he plays himself at the convention scene as we're all familiar with. So, but he doesn't share this recognition alone. He uh, shares it with the uh, the lovely lady by his side who is also a very talented artist in her own right, uh, Laura, Laura Allred. Uh, she's a skilled colorist, and she's known uh, basically for working with her husband. And Bader more or less uh, started talking about all those statistics regarding divorce. Um, those are real things. And, and as lighthearted as we keep it, comics are tough. Even if you're a mainstream comic book artist, regardless of what you do, writer, writer, um, penciler, colorist, anchor. Uh, it's difficult, even for the mainstream. So for both of these, uh, for this power couple, if you will, to have stayed together in the indie scene and then while they were cutting their teeth, push through and make it towards where, you know, people like Adam West are introducing them as my official artist wow, for Batman. Awesome. Uh, you know, it says something, you know? So it's a, it's a, nice, it's a nice thing to see, you know, uh, a couple like this produce art and it not affect how they feel about their, you know, they got a passion for what they do and a passion for each other. So um, I think one of the coolest things that they've put out is the uh, David Bowie Stardust Ray mm. Guns and Moon Age Daydreams. Uh, I've got the hardcover graphic novel as I'm a huge Bowie fan. So, you know, treat yourself. Like Potter said, this is some really cool stuff. Go on, Seth. That's, uh, I think that's a pretty good overview. Thank you. See, I, pre- I, I, I agree. Absolutely. Ashley. How familiar are you are you with the with the Alreds? Have they been on your radar for a while? Um, yeah, just because um, I I think I saw it at the comic shop and it it stood out. I think it was one of those um, Silver Surfer mm-hmm. covers where it it stood out the way that it looked among all the other Marvel art in there. It stood out because it had this like pop art um, like Lichtenstein look yeah. to it, but then it also was like so clean and modern that it kind of looked like like the future of comic mm. art too like it just had such a timeless feel to it um that the first time i saw it it like literally just stopped me in my tracks and i was like what is this like clean beautiful <laughs> piece of artwork that i'm just walking by that nobody's told me about damn i, I don't think i've ever heard you describe a, a an artist quite so flowery and, and elegantly <laughs> It was a it was a big day for me. <laughs> <laughs> I have it on the calendar. We celebrate it. <laughs> <laughs> there's Christmas and then there's Mike Alred Day. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, um, but the fact I mean I mean you guys can relate to this because you know you're married to an artist as well. You're both artists, so mm-hmm. just the yeah. fact that having two creatives work together mm-hmm. and be married together, more or less, just the regular statistics of being married because you know, I always joke around with my friends. It's like, don't date an artist. It's like, oh, the worst. Don't date them. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but just the fact that they could, because I think they're so low key and so just like, so they're so still obviously just hearing the few interviews they give, they're still crazy about each other as grandparents at this point. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. And just the fact that their work evolved and the fact that they're, they haven't split, you know, creatively, bands don't stay together this long. You know, what creative right. group <laughs> stays together this long? And the fact that you're living together, too, on top of that, that's another form of stress. It's just, it's, it's crazy. It's just they're a, a model, you know, that I've never seen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wonder how much of, uh, like, that privacy factor plays into them, like, n- you know, maybe the longevity of their uh, uh, professional and just personal relationship. The fact that they're not, you know, in the public eye. Like, a, you know, we brought up Frank Miller and Lynn Varley. I think, you know, their situation was, was definitely a, a point of a topic at some point, right? 
Like the, it was, yeah. it was rocky. Mm-hmm. It was like people knew, like you know, what was going a little bit of what was going on behind the scenes. Mike, and I think that's why Mike Allred can kind of have both indie cred and mainstream cred. That's why Marvel. He's worked for Marvel, DC. No issues. Mm-hmm. You never hear he's not rattling cages like some of these guys do, for good or for bad. You know. So they he just and just listening to him now, it's like he just loves to draw comics, and right. that's what he wants to do. And. Laura loves working with him, loves doing, loves the whole process. And they basically yeah. like seeing each other happy and it's crazy and <laughs> I can't relate to that. But <laughs> like I said, it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just a. It's definitely an outlier. Yeah. It's, yeah. Cause like I said, he's not the type to, he's not like a Todd McFarlane or like the image guys that are, yeah. you know, going around stomping hard and making noise. You know, he's just head down doing all the work he can do. He's a nice Mormon nice boy. Man. He did a, he did the Book of Mormon. The golden plates. He, yeah, the golden plates. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I own See, it. I'm aware. See, he convinced me to uh, th- to give that a read as well, and I thought that was pretty interesting stuff, to say the very least. Um, See, so I'm gonna take it to you, man. What was your first? Uh, do you remember like your first conscious exposure to the Alrights? I, I absolutely do. Uh, just like Ashley, I have it marked in my calendar. And, uh, <laughs> celebrate it's a national every holiday. Day. You know, honestly, it was in Wizard Magazine. Mm. The first time I saw uh, Mike and Laura's work was in Wizard. Picks? And it was in the... No, oh. this was in the early 90s. Oh, okay. uh, I'm sorry, no, mid-90s. And there was a Milk and Cheese board game. Mm. Another weird independent uh, comic book title. And you could... If you turned... The, it was like a pullout, like a poster, uh, you know, attached to the spine. So I, I you know tear the little perforation and I looked and I was like oh there's milk and cheese board game I don't know who these characters are I'm too young to be into this <laughs> and then but on the back it was a picture of madman and I was like what a weird looking dude what a weird looking character but I I, I instantly got it like as young as I was I, I got it I was like oh this is kind of like a throwback this this seems like a throwback but done with sort of modern sensibilities like I really dig this, um, but what came out was I I like it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was like you know mid nineties. I I saw that and I was like, this guy's pretty good. And so ever since then, they were both sort of on my radar. I've got to say that um, uh, I read Madman for the first time uh, during the, my research process. I read like the the first series, like the you know uh, like. The OG, OG where his mask is still yeah, kind of all like the way I think nineteen ninety three black and white. Uh, oh, wow. What was the name of the Tundra Publishing? Oh, Kevin Eastman <laughs> yeah. or something like that. Charity kind of label. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, that's a story. That yeah. was really fun. <laughs> that was a really fun read, and, and it's got me really interested in diving into some more of that character because, like you said, see, I had well, I guess maybe you didn't say it, but I, I I've seen that character around many times. Like I've just seen him around in like Dark Horse anthologies i think he had a team of like superman at mm-hmm. some point like i've seen that character around a lot and i didn't know that was an original creation hell i mean i didn't know that mike and laura were responsible for this many original characters you know madman i zombie the, uh, the atomics yeah. the atomic the that. art uh, for blunt man and chronic exactly. and, yep uh, chasing That's another one too so they've been around a, a long time man and they've been like you said uh, um at, like they are indie darlings like they've kind of lived in both yeah. worlds and in mall rats the opening credits oh, that's right yeah They've been around a lot, and I think they've cut their teeth and, and found success in, in, you know, in both, in, in several, like, pockets. Like, the indie pocket, the, the mainstream, uh, even doing, like, license work, like the David Bowie stuff that, that C had said. Um, Everywhere you fear to tread. <laughs> Whatever, man. <laughs> I'm in these streets, all right? I'm in these comic book streets nowadays. Ed, how would, okay, all right, all right. Ed, how would you, how would you personally describe, like, their, their style and their artwork? Like I said, it is, like I said, super clean. He is probably one of the best brush inkers I've seen. And his figure work is incredible. Like the people, and what's, and the, the thing with having a clean style is images can look static or, you know, kind of boring, you know, sometimes. But his figures are right. always in crazy poses. They're not hardly ever just standing straight, you know. <laughs> um, but it has that 50s, 60s kind of, um, commercial art comic art like yeah. ashley said lichtenstein sensibilities and i know they both love just reading interviews they both love flat color flat using flat colors so like i said and i always like that because it doesn't fight with the fight with the um with the inking hmm. and like i said just really simple deceptively simple but just like super clean 
just like I said, it's I found out how they do their their process. Um, basically, the, they ink the original scanned lines, and then he takes the artwork. And this is a good way, good benefit of living together while doing this. So he she re- scans, scans the original ink lines, and then he goes back and does like washes and things like that, gives it more rendering, and then they scan that. And so she has those black ink lines that she can lay on top of that texture created by the washes. Hmm. So you don't lose that black line, that nice black line, but you also can use flat colors and like the texture of those techniques adds more depth to those colors. So you're not using a lot of, they they want to make it look as non-computer looking as possible because like I said, they're, they were coloring, you know, pre-digital era too. So they've been around that long. So speaking of the, uh, the art, I'm going to say that's something that I, I was in my to to add to Ed's point is that I was watching some interviews with him and he said that if he had he said he's lost count of times that people have come up to him and his wife and said how cartoony their art looks Hmm. Um, and as a result he made sure his fundamentals were really good Hmm. and that he said you you will be hard-pressed to find my anatomy is wrong he's like I I like like I challenge you you know like he he said I want to make sure my my anatomy is on point so that way you know yeah okay car- I, I don't get cartoony you know i'm i'm trying to do kirby but yeah. okay cool <laughs> um i don't know ashley what do you think about that as far as like the artistic process is concerned i mean i think it is something where if you like i don't want to sound like high and mighty but like to the untrained eye it does look cartoony sure because of how simple it is but then you look into it and you're like every single line could not be moved a millimeter or else it wouldn't look right. Um, And I think that's what's so great about his artwork is that it can be simple. And like Ed said, it's, it's not flat. If anything, it's like completely like full of energy with just simple lines and like flat colors, which I don't know. I can't think of anyone else that can do it like he does it and like she does it. Well, you're kind of the master of watercolor. And for the record, I've kind of given up. Like I came at you like a while ago, like years ago, and I told Ashley, this is funny. I was like, Ashley, I think I want to get into watercolors. And you were like, yeah, cool. And I was like, so like, what do I got to do? And you were kind of like, well, um, this, this. And I was like, okay. And then I kind of was like, nah, son. Nah, I hate watercolor too. I'm not doing this. I can't do this. But Ashley navigates those waters, no pun intended, flawlessly is speaking from that perspective do you as somebody who kind of processes things that way see that and go weird why would they make that choice or i totally get that that yes this is awesome um the way that they they layer everything like ed was explaining like i i totally understand that and that's such a good idea um I remember, uh, or I read one of her few articles that she has where she was like, yeah, you know, he's he's doing more texture. He's adding more details. Like, I hope he's not like not going to need me anymore. <laughs> and then she was like laughing about it. Um, but yeah, it's just the way that they do it is really, um, it's it's different. And he couldn't do it that way if he didn't have her, you know, right next to him in the studio. Ashley, I, I, I'm going to lean in on, on your um, professional expertise uh, w- once again. And, and I wanted to know, maybe there's someone listening that isn't quite familiar with, like, the process between the artist and, and the colorist. And as someone, like, that, you know, you kind of walk in both worlds as both the artist and the colorist. Like, what what is the normal process between a comic artist and the colorist? Like, how does that work get, um, how does, like, that direction or input get shared? So pretty much when they send you over the inks, um, a lot of times there's like no color palette, no nothing. Um, They'll just send you a bunch of stuff that they like. And so you have to figure out, you know, what works best for the story versus, you know, what the, the artist likes. And then you do your best and show it to them. And they either say, hey, you see my vision or else they say, this is garbage. Like, let's, let's like keep going and like figure this out. Um, so I think at this point she knows what he likes. Like, I feel like there's very few times where she has to go back and like change yeah, well, there's something. that trust too. And he's, he's yeah. colorblind to an extent. Oh, wow. so he has to trust her, her. And basically I've, 
you know, when he was getting into comics, he was basically, she was working, I believe, in the jewelry as a jeweler. Um, so she was working while he was kind of getting into the industry. And, but Laura, she's been a painter since she was a kid. So she's, and they both went to art school. And, uh, that's cute. Yeah. So, and mm-hmm. they, he's, and he was doing black and white stuff. And there was, and she kind of jokes, like, oh, tell you what, if it's like, and she was like, I was working full time when with kids, I'm just, I don't have time to do painting you know i'm i'm exhausted and it's like it's like well you should you know you should keep doing your art you went to school for art you should at least have some time to do it it's like well, i'll tell you what you start doing color comics i'll color your work it's kind of like a you know a bet and that's how it started <laughs> that's funny mm-hmm. yeah i think i've I seen somewhere um i had read somewhere where uh laura was describing um you know kind of kind of to your to the point that you just made ashley about that process where she gets a lot of uh, where Mike like is like it seems like he's kind of like the the exuberant kind of like child of the group, right? Like he's very he's got like this childlike excitement when it comes to uh, describing his stories and, and what he's got planned. And she kind of takes it in. She listens. It kind of reminded me of like the Marvel method, where it's like you've got uh, uh, one person that's sharing with the uh, kind of talking out the ideas and the actions and, and what the plan is, and then you know Laura kind of takes that in. And because of that that long because of that trust and that long established partnership that sh- they've got, she knows like, you know, she's got, I guess a lot of like carte blanche when it comes to color choice and, and whatnot. And she was saying that, um, you know, having been with Mike so long that he's inundated her with, you know, I think she said like European comic books, like yeah. pop art, like everything that he, that he likes and the influences that he's trying to, uh, um, uh, you know, pay homage to. Uh, she's been inundated with that and that's like you know so she's got a lot of his like uh, perspective and influences in mind when she's creating yeah and she's like i said she has that painter's eye too you have a sense of color when you've been painting that long and you know she grew up you know reading like archie and you know mad magazine that have some of the you know sensibilities like especially like archie stuff they kind of have the same kind of color sensibilities that he's looking for i think it was cool that a lot of her influences from a coloring perspective comes more so from like animation and, and classically trained artists. I, um, uh, I think actually we might have read the same interview, um, but did you get to the part where she was sharing like her influences and, and it was all like traditional artist? Like there was no comic book artist or colorist, fellow colorist <laughs> in that list. It was all like, look, I like animators. I like these classic pop artists and, and uh, surrealists. Uh, you know, Dolly was among one of them, among others. Did you get to that part? Yeah, I did. And that was really interesting because I, I did. I scanned it and I was like, oh, these are all like, you know, like old school. Like you go to the gallery and they're in oil paintings with like frames around yeah. them. Like there's not one comic artist in this group. Yeah. That's art school. You know, they kind of you're going to learn to like these people and appreciate them. <laughs> when I see there, I mean, that, <laughs> mm-hmm. well, no, I was just going to say, there you go. Like good art isn't influenced by the media it is trying to create it's influenced by other things right yeah like you know same thing with movies you know like if you try to like if a for instance a marvel or a disney movie is influenced by it's like well we want to make this kind of thing okay well what what have they done in the past it's like nah sometimes it works but like then you'll get a guy like john favreau who's like and dave filoni who are basically people at Disney they're rocking the boat right now <laughs> um, they're like mm, screw continuity I kind of want to do this here's a cool story can we make it not like said franchise that exists already and it's like oh what well, I don't know and you know it's refreshing to see that that's consistent with good art yeah. that you know you have to you have to go outside of what people expect and and you know a- actually it totally makes sense that Laura's into Dali, you know, and that she's, mm. you know, when you, when asked about like, well, what are your influences? Huh? <laughs> Did you look up uh, who Jim Lee's colorist is? And, and uh, what are that? That's like, nah, I kind of like shit outside of where I'm working. Cause if it's all cannibalized, it's not going to be fresh. Thought or die. No, no, okay. Hey guys. Uh, sure uh, well, <laughs> welcome sure back. <laughs> <laughs> but but I wanted to I wanted to actually mention some of the artists uh, she listed just for anyone who might be an art buff listening in. But she mentioned you know artists like uh, uh, 
uh, Hopper, Dolly, uh, Matisse, Monet, Kil- uh, Klimt. Um, I think Klimt. was the other one. Mm. Talk dirty Pissed to me. Klimt. <laughs> Klimt. <laughs> yeah. So as you can tell, like you know, very classical artist. Um, which is interesting because, uh, and, and of course, this is my my own personal view on it. And maybe you guys, you know, feel free to call me crazy, but. Anytime crazy. I look at the crazy, crazy. Okay, got it. <laughs> it was yeah. much quicker than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> but I've always felt when I look at their that's why you're crazy. When I look no. at their when I look at their <laughs> their work together, I get MTV like liquid television animation so, animated vibes. Like it's I, the 90s. It, it makes me think like Aeon Flux and and, and uh, what was it Dar- Darley Darley Daria Daria. Thank you so much. Daria. Daria. Like how flat it is. Well, those were all independent artists who were. Well, yeah, that was kind of the thing, right? Like. Damn it, Vodder. Why did you <laughs> fucking Vodder. Come on, old guy. Ed, come on, old guy. He's guys. tricking us, Ed. Mm. Ed, he's tricking us. He's trying to get us to talk about he's trying to get us to talk about animation in the eighties no. and how it led to the nineties. It's not don't you do that. No, no. That's an episode into itself. But yes, it's all it's all yeah. connected. Ralph Bakshi, Punk Rock Two D animation, mm-hmm. Gendy Tartakovsky, Craig McCracken. Mm-hmm. They all have roots in the same sort of I'm tired of this, but I like pop culture. Yeah. And I, mean, I guess uh, my, my point at the end of the day is that if they were to ever, I, I feel like their style is so built for animation. I'm surprised that we haven't gotten, I think there was an iZombie. I don't, was it an animated show? No, it was a live action. It was, it was a live t- action. No, okay. actual CW yeah. show. Which, which is crazy. I think we haven't gotten an animated series or, or show based on any of their properties I know this already. is bad for audio, but have you guys seen this? Spaceman? Triple A no. pop. No. So basically, it's Mike and Laura Allred, but they got a painter to do the background, so it looks like a cell, oh. cell shaded cartoon. Could you put it up to the actual yeah. camera? Because mm. video, I can barely it. see it. Yeah, I got it. Do, 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 do. So you can see that. Oh, that shit looks yeah, sweet. Yeah, so insides Ooh. like that too. So. Let's see. Hey, r- random tangent, and, and maybe it, maybe it's either like, a, uh, like an old Scooby Doo cartoon. Yeah, like an <laughs> old Hanna Barbera awesome. cartoon. Yeah, the painter is uh, Lawrence Marvitt. So, like I said, they did this issue, and it's like there's something. It's like a total experience. And this is when he did independent publishing, his own label, uh, the AAA Pop with Oni Press. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, but I'm just surprised that we haven't gotten like an animated show or series because their 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 style is so built for it. Like the clean lines, the very flat colors. Uh, I, I think Mike is yeah. also really good at developing unique characters whether they be aliens and like silver surfer or, or yeah. madman or just like unique expressions like i feel like if you like dupe if you like yeah. it's, it's <laughs> dupe being a great example the from thing Ecstatic. too with like madman i know it was it's he's i think he just recently got the rights back maybe a few years ago because universal optioned it for a movie in like 95 hmm. and then robert oh, rodriguez has been sitting on it for a while and never did it so it's oh, like wow. it's been kind of tied up so now that he has it maybe yeah. he'll get a cartoon but Funny thing too with that is, is um, he introduced Frank Miller to Robert Rodriguez, and and Robert oh God, Rodriguez was like, mm. I was like, yeah, this will be you know practice for Mad Men. We'll do this, and then we'll do Mad Men. And they're just like, mm. Mm. that didn't happen. <laughs> well, I'm glad. Actually, where was where was where was all this in the '90s? Where were you? Was is he this like on your no radar? TV, like, were you like in the woods? <laughs> <laughs> I think I was like in a tree reading books in the '90s. Oh, books. Honest to God, like what a I, mood. <laughs> I missed a lot of the '90s. Well, I'm glad you you're, you didn't miss much. <laughs> I'm glad Ed you brought up uh, uh, television because I wanted to talk about um, Mike's specifically Mike in this case, but his uh, giant love for for Batman, specifically the '60s Adam West Batman. And you know, I bring that up and I'll toss it to you, see, because me and you had a conversation uh, earlier this week about um, when I asked you what are some of your favorite Mike L. Red stuff that I should be checking out, you were like, yo, Batman 66. I don't even think like you took a, a minute to breathe. It was Batman <laughs> 66. And I was surprised that he only had done, did the covers. And I was, because I was expecting like, you know, full interiors. Because when we talk about Mike L. Red, I'll say that dude is an interior artist, you know, all the way through. He does it all. Um, but in this case, you know, his work was specifically... Uh, uh, tied to the covers, which is something he's very proud of. And, and I got to admit, even though, you know, I didn't get 22 pages of, of full Mike and Laura uh, uh, artwork, I was Psh, you're not gonna. really impressed. <laughs> you're not going to. I was really no, impressed. They're big time now, baby. True. Big True. time, yo. They like to sit beside the scenes but, and watch the green come in. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? But even man? though, as funny as that is, 
they still, I mean, for as big as they are, they definitely don't shy away from the challenge of doing a monthly title. I mean, hell, they're doing I'm, one now. They're no, no, doing no, it right yeah, now. With excellence. With excellent, right. which was really yeah. funny. Yeah. But, but but I digress. Um, Batman 66. See, well, why why was that like some, why is that revered so highly by you? And why do you think that's some of uh, Mike and Laura's best work? I think, it, well, it's a reflection of what he what he is as an artist. So I was watching a bunch of interviews to prepare for this. And one of the things I heard him say is he says, you know, nostalgia gets thrown around a lot when I, when people refer to my work and he says, I have to be really careful with that word because I don't really see it as nostalgia so much as what I try to do with my artwork is try to recreate just one singular moment. Like, cause most people, if they're being honest, they'll want to relive at least one point in their life when they were kids at least one more time or at least multiple times and have that same feeling. Mm-hmm. And he says, it's not the same thing as nostalgia. <clears throat> so he says, what I wanted to do is, you know, recreate that sort of feeling as far as the art is concerned for Batman 66. And he has countless stories where him and his uh, brother Lee would like run around with like plastic <laughs> Halloween mask pulled down and like, you know, capes going na 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 you know, all that stuff. And he uh you know, he he finally got a chance to put uh I guess both him and his wife got a chance to put their talents to task for DC and create amazing covers, not just for uh Batman sixty six. There's a very famous uh DC solo issue mm. where Batman's doing the bat two scene. Oh yeah. Um and it got Adam West's attention and he wanted to meet Adam West and it was at you know at the convention circuit and I think it was at San Diego Comic Con and Laura's like, You're gonna go meet him? And he's like, you know, I wanna have a perfect picture in my brain <laughs> of this guy. I don't want to yeah. ruin it. Uh, and she's like, Well I'll meet him. So she goes and then like she comes back to him and she's like, he was really nice and he's like, damn it, you know, like <laughs> but eventually they end up meeting and he's like, oh yeah, I'm the guy that drew this. And then Adam West was over the moon and he got to meet Burt Ward and he was like, hey, come on, I want to introduce you to Julie Newmar, you know, Catwoman. Mm. And then he's like, hey, you want to sit in the Batmobile? And you know, <laughs> Mike Alred's head is exploding at this point. So the fact that he's able to, you know, with the love of his life, uh, share in these sort of like memories and basically do tributes to different things, just like James Bond, uh, posters and you know silly stuff like actual batman dancing um it's it's very it's 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 charming it's delightful it's cute um and i think that's kind of why i like it because after hearing him talk about it because you know when you see the covers you're like duh it's a no-brainer get mike alred he's the guy you want the pop art dude he is the pop art dude but not only is he that guy it's him and his wife and they both sort of share this sort of like experience of trying to infuse their energy from a a perspective of genuine concern and love for the genre right not just you know comics but (laughs) a tv show that was you know considered it's still considered uh, a watershed as far as uh comedy is concerned and it's so it's like a lot of people's first time first batman experience you know yep Yep. Yeah, th- those covers stand stand on their own. Like, yeah, y- you wish you had like the whole book illustrated by them, but those covers just stand on their own. So, like, like they're statement pieces. Yeah. To, to your point, Butter uh, Mondo has been putting oh. out the Mike those sixty six covers as Not 20, uh, 27 by thirty six uh, posters you Damn. can buy, and I believe that run so. ran for thirty plus issues i know mike and laura did the last issue they did illustrate the the full last issue with their brother lee which i want to i do want to bring up that you know they they keep it in the family you know lee alred <laughs> being mike alred's older brother and i believe the reason he got into comic books or at least a big oh, did, you know did, did you hear the story about how he got introduced to comics by lee no i hit it so yeah. <laughs> this is this has been on two interviews and one with lee there to verify it so he said he remembers when they were both little, and I don't know the age difference, but um, like I said, I guess Lee had him dance on this table and like dance yep. faster. And then the next thing like Mike remembers is waking up in the hospital. 
but the, the whole bed was covered in comics and like Lee looking guilty at the end of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was fun. Like they're just little kids playing. Yeah. And, and he's like, yo, dance, 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 harder. dance, boy. dance harder. He gives yeah. him so much credit because like Lee had, even as a kid, he had good taste. <laughs> and like back then, you know, we didn't, they didn't have comic stores. No direct market was nowhere near being a thing. So basically right. the parents would go to the drugstore, the grocery store, grab them a bunch of comics to keep them quiet on those road trips, you know? <laughs> now <laughs> I can't. Like, yeah. And Lee would get, you know, basically kind of got all the Kirby stuff and like they loved the uh, Forager bug from the New Gods. Mm -hmm. oh, so Forager that was bug, like a, yeah. a, a character they both kind of bonded over and ended up doing a series by Young Animal a couple of years ago, which is awesome um now, now i can't stop thinking about the uh, uh sly and the family stone song family affair <laughs> it's a family affair yeah i think uh, uh it, 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 and it sounds like mike shares a lot of the uh shares a lot of the same stories um because I, I i barely remember that one but have you heard of the one where he actually talks about meeting his wife and it's pretty straightforward he's like it, it, it's very sentimental very beautiful and it, you know it's essentially like he seen her at a bus stop. He was in college, seen her at a bus, <laughs> come on, uh, hop on a bus. You know, he was coming on a bus, and either she was getting off or coming on as well, but he was so entranced by how beautiful she was. <laughs> and uh, he was on the bus like, I really should have gotten off this bus to go say something to her. Uh, he gets back to his dorm. He hears a, a knocking on the door, and it's, it's this girl and Laura also there together. And the girl was looking for Mike's roommate. She had like left over some, I think some records or something like that. She was there to pick him up. But uh, he convinces Laura like, hey, do you want to go for a walk? And they go for a walk. And that's really like the end of it. They were inseparable and they got married very shortly after that. I thought that was a very now, guys, thing. for Mormons, that's some spicy <laughs> stuff, okay? <laughs> that's some real spicy stuff. So, you know, just... Yeah. Put that in your so, pipe and smoke. It's just it. been, it's been, it's, it's very, um, it, it's very beautiful to see like how inseparable yeah. Yeah. they've been in all aspects and of the life. Two too. interviews, he has made her cry. Oh, just how being how sweet he was. She starts, she cries yeah. like in two separate occasions. He's a smoothie. <laughs> definitely I think you said it. I think you said it earlier, Ed. Where it's like their love is still very yeah. apparent. Like it's it's energetic. Like you can't. It, it's kind of like contagious. Like just uh, uh, the the love and energy they have between the two and, and and it's awesome that it shows and it translates in the body of work too you know like together they i don't i tried thinking of like other artists that would kind of be in their realm and, and i'm thinking like you know names like trad Moore kind of come to mind where you know he's got that very clean style and he tends to play with alex toth alex mm -hmm. toth but but i gotta say like they really are you know at the end of the day very unique like their brand of comic style is is like like Ashley said like I still think that we haven't quite seen someone that that can mimic that no. or, or really like tap into whatever they're tapping in together and, and I gotta say maybe that uniqueness is because of you know the fact that they're a married couple that yeah. really share everything. You see one of their pieces, you know exactly who it is. You know, oh, it's like without a doubt, and without a doubt. Well, and so. it's I don't know if if the craft is too intimidating, but I have not seen anybody try to ape that style. Or even attempt mm. to, mm. you know, like, because, you know, in the 90s, you know, okay, everybody started drawing like Lee Field and Lee and McFarlane and, you know, like ev the, all the Neil Adams had the influence, branches of influence of different artists and Kirby. And you look at them, you see the influence, you see Kirby, you see like the Hernandez yeah. brothers, you know, but it's uniquely their own, you know, yeah. and it's, yeah, you look at their work and it's like, oh yeah, that's yeah. the Alrids. <laughs> and, and I firmly believe both of them, you know, uh, established successful highly talented artists right like mike fantastic draftsman uh pencil work and all that laura respectable colorist like they could stand on their own and, and they do but you know as, as we've kind of come to figure out so far from what we've shared like the the occurrences of them working separately or not having worked together is very rare i think you can probably count on one hand how many projects or comics uh, that Mike has done without Laura, and that's very little. So it kind of goes to show that, like you know, th they are you know two it's a package deal home. guys. You hire me, <laughs> <Yeah>. Laura's. <laughs> look, yeah. that's the, that's the way it is. You got to look out for your your partner yeah, in crime. Think, your freaking ride or yeah, die, you know. Laura. And then speaking of, uh, I got to give Sarah a quick bathroom break. So uh, I'll be back. You guys talk amongst <laughs> yourselves. All right. Uh, well, actually, Ed, I wanted to. Uh, toss it to you since we are we, you know we've kind of thrown out names of like some of their famous titles like we've talked about uh madman we've we've touched a little bit on ecstatic but i wanted to 
uh, uh, hear from you and if you could share some of the other like notable bodies of work. Like, what, if, what is, sorry, other notable bodies of work, what other key contributions have they given to like comic books? Oh man, like I said, it's, I think, like I said, just, you know, they did stuff for, especially in the, their timing is, 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 they kind of came up in a strange time during comics. So like I said, they started with Slave Labor and on Kamiko. Like, and as soon as he was working for Kamiko, they go out of business. So he has a comic called Dead Air with Slave Labor. And he humbly says the only reason that they published it is because he had it done. Because hmm. he didn't know that they did, it, you know, <laughs> you do a pitch and then do the book. He's like, oh, I thought you did the whole thing and then yeah, gave it to him. <laughs> mm-hmm. But then, you know, like I said, he's worked for like a, the graphic music. You can kind of see the early Frank Einstein Madman stuff. Um, the caliber, you know, for caliber comics, he did, a like I said, he made a lot of good friends in the industry. Neil Gaiman hooked him up with a, with a Sandman story. He did, he has a, his own label during a time where comics were in the toilet, you know, like, yeah, no, I, like in 2000, starting your own independent label is, is tricky and in running it. And like, that's the triple A pop, which he did for, I think one year with the, um, that's with the aesthetics and then it girl and yeah. then like a couple spinoffs and like i said it's they've that's definitely been, a that's definitely a big claim to fame like to be this successful and even try your hand at like the publishing route I think yeah and then doing respectful. like the superman madman crossover doing like i said basically i think like x-force before the ecstatics like actually coming in they're taking chances they're they're look they're needing to look differently so i think mm. his style really afforded him opportunities where probably five, six years ago, he wouldn't have gotten them. Yeah. Like said, okay, we need to change X-Force. So you can imagine X-Force, Lee Fields X-Force. Rough, and that look, rugged, and raw. Big, 90s. giant muscles, pouches, yeah. crazy-looking characters to Mike Allred's art, you know? And that was like, it's like they took a chance on him, yeah. and he, like, succeeded. And him and Peter Milligan did that, and they kind of basically did what I think Youngblood was trying to do but you didn't mm. really know having like, the celebrity <laughs> superhero kind of thing and, and I'll, I'll i'll jump in in here because i i want to i want to highlight that you know in addition to a very unique art style that i think stands out on its own and, and is you know like a signature style like the alred style i think he's also very savvy and and smart when it comes to picking his assignments sure where in addition to a unique style you're also getting like a different what i feel like a very unique approach to like superhero comics and and you know mm-hmm. i'm looking just kind of specifically at his his marvel stuff where he's come into like x-force um uh, created x static and then even like his, his recent stuff like silver surfer and um like the that short run uh, uh ff series he did with matt fraction yeah. where all of them are, are kind of dealing like you know like uh like co- he infuses you know between him and his writer they're able to infuse like comedy like kind of uh like really kind of um quirkiness to yeah. it quirky is a good word uh, for yeah quirky style. i think you know like when you think about x-force and then his transition to ecstatic he was covering you know like making superheroes celebrities and, and mm-hmm. dealing with like you know uh topics about fame uh, uh you know uh, um oh darn it, what was the other stuff uh i'm sorry dealing with, with topics about superheroes you know e- sorry before the boys really kind of honed in on it you know sure. his his ecstatic stuff was dealing with superheroes and, and media corporate world you yeah. know uh tackling things about like uh, uh characters groupies. dying every issue almost. yeah <laughs> hollywood agents contracts yeah. ad- addiction racism like, and death like like what, what should my name be is like is this marketable yeah. like the crazy stuff like yeah. that that's yeah. what i like about like w- when you go into an all red like if you see the the all reds names attached to a comic book I think it's safe to say that you are also going to get a, a unique story that kind of fits the the visuals, you know, like that kind of wacky, quirky pop art. Like you're going to also, you know, feel that evoked in, in the story itself. Yeah, and, and I think he basically, you know, he he's even said, it's like I have a, you know, this specific skill set that, you know, people will offer me things because I think the Silver Surfer, they they offered him that. It's like, do you want to do Silver Surfer with Dan Slott? It's like, Pfft. Are you kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> which like, is such a yeah. which is such, a, and I think in, for that series he was considered a uh, co uh, collaborator. It wasn't yeah. just you know uh, credited as artist, but like co collaborator. Like he was working very closely yeah, with Dan Slott. Between like him and his brother, they have like pretty in depth Kirby knowledge. Hmm. So he yeah. definitely brings something to the table. Yeah. Them and Fantastic Four. Yeah. Actually, did you re- did you end up reading? Because uh, you had mentioned that you know uh, Mike Alred's Silver Surfer is what put him on the map for you. Did you end up reading that series? Because I know it's like. 
highly acclaimed. I think the, the whole, that whole creative team won in Eisner. Mm -hmm. Like, did you end up reading that whole series, or what can you say about it? I didn't. I just, I mean, I have some of the issues, but it's one of those things where it's like a picture book to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's at pretty. the time, I really wasn't into Silver Surfer, but I have a few just to, like, look at all the pretty panels yeah. in it. Okay. Uh, what I miss? Uh, Ashley talking shit about Silver <laughs> Surfer? What happened? Just a little bit, man. Just a little bit. Uh, she, she don't fuck with her boy. I'll not stand for this yeah, blasphemy. Yeah, no Rad? Come on, bro. No one, no one Rad in the house? Uh, Yo, Ashley, that's racist <laughs> against people from Zen <laughs> Well, Ashley, what I guess what bodies of work? What would be your personal recommendations for someone that's that's listening? Is like, okay, they sold me on Mike and Laura Alred. What do I, you know, where do I got to dive in? What would you personally recommend? So honestly, it's um, just because it's new, and I think there's only three issues out. Um, there could be more, but um, the excellent yeah. book. I read the first issue on Marvel. That's out Marvel right Unlimited. now. Yeah, because it is just like Let's I feel calm like down, he's. <laughs> Yeah. Easy. <laughs> Monday. Um he really does like they really do as a team just get better and like this book is just crammed with characters. Yeah, one of the characters like, absolutely crammed with characters. Is like the daughter. And everything's yeah. yeah, like everything in the front is just as detailed as like all the little characters in the back. Like it's just it's insane. It's so yeah, good. It's funny cuz like And it's funny, it's funny too. It's it's crazy cuz he's been doing this since late 80s we'll say and his work is consistent if not gets better and more detailed because yeah. you look at mm -hmm. some of the early madman stuff and you look at the excellence it's like there's a lot more stuff jammed in here yeah. it's wild if you're reading <laughs> if you're reading any of his ecstatic or excellent stuff i'm telling you now laura's colors are so bright and they pop and just jump off the page you don't even uh, if you're reading it on a on a on an iPad, you don't need no other lights in the house because <laughs> that comic book will illuminate your whole house. Like I was reading it in bed, and it's like just I had it at the lowest display setting possible, and her colors still managed to just you know you had it at the lowest display setting possible, and someone from down the street was like, <laughs> like "I don't even make a sound." The colors like, are so loud I had, that yeah, like, I had, people down the street here. I had no lights on, and my JEA bill was still going <laughs> through the roof because their colors are so high. Yeah, it's it's great stuff. Uh, See, so what about you, man? What would you recommend uh, for anyone that wants to jump down a Mike and Laura Alred like rabbit hole? Where do they need look, to stop? This is look. This is I'm sure you guys have hit all the 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 good the good stuff already, but I'm going to tell you one that's not main. The Golden Plates. Mm. Um, I'm going to tell you this: they are Mike has said it in the past they're both mormon and uh they feel very passionate about their beliefs so much so that um they created a adaptation of select stories from the book of mormon and they called it uh, uh on golden plates or the golden plates and uh look i by no means am a mormon nor do i subscribe to the ideologies of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints a bunch i don't however they're, from an art perspective, they're, that book is beautiful and it's really cool to look at and it's neat to see what goes on inside somebody's mind when they're like, look, yeah, I, I look, here's what I'm invested in comic book wise. You guys know I like Jack Kirby. You guys know I love Batman. But here's a little something you didn't know. Uh, I'm a devout Mormon and this is another passion of mine and you can see like in the artwork it's just it's got that same sort of weird frenetic energy that like ed said like nobody's aped their style so i mean it's like the they're like the odb of freaking comics there ain't no they ain't no father to their style like no one's gonna freaking yeah. do it they came to bring the pain one to the brain took one for the dream and the team just like malcolm x thank bro. you so much anyway, well um, said. <laughs> but yeah so uh the golden plates i highly recommend the, you can get it on amazon in a trade um just it's just so bonkers yeah. it's so bizarre and weird and before you talk shit about mormons man I'll say what you want they're good at taking it on the chin man they, they, you could be like, yo, you're fucking crazy. And they'll be like, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. You know, and like, and they'll just, and they'll just move on, yo. Like, you wouldn't, without Mormons, you wouldn't have Battlestar Galactica. I'll just say that. Well said. I'll just say Thank that. Thank you so much, MC SZA. That, that was good. Thank you for sharing those words. And, I, and I'll go ahead and, um, and I'll go ahead and, and embrace that too, because that was a recommendation C gave me. And at first I was like, I'm not reading a comic book about the Book of Mormonism. 
uh, about the Book of Mormon. <laughs> and I ended up reading the first issue, and I got to say, now you got a tie, you got a little <laughs> white shirt, you're talking on people, <laughs> knocking on doors. Yeah, it was it was an interesting read. And I got to, I mean, clearly, like, he is putting, they're bringing their best foot forward because this is a subject matter that means so much for them. And, sure. you know, the, uh, it, it's fantastic art, artistically wise. Like, it, it is a beautiful book, and it just goes to show that the range that, you know, Mike and Laura have, they can draw the, you know, they can hang with the best X-Men artists. They can draw, you know, a, a quirky uh, superhero commentary, you know, with, with ecstatic. They can create their own independent, you know, characters with, with Madman the Atomics. And they can also draw the best damn biblical, you know, icons in the game, baby. Um, <laughs> But I'll, I'll go ahead and extra, extra biblical, yeah, but okay. Yeah, little, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they added a little flair to it. You know, they took it to an eleven. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'll go ahead and, and recommend anyone to check out their creator own body of work because it, it is really impressive that um, you know they've hung out with the big dogs and, and the and the big two, and at the same time still have you know mainly the you know they made a name with creator owned properties you know that that are well respected among you know like the most hardcore you know uh stick their nose up to any comic yeah, book and, crowd and imagine like getting invited to join that legend imprint with like frank miller mike mignola yeah, yeah. those guys and john byrne like those guys are established artists and this they just have this guy come yeah. into that group that's that's wild <laughs> so i'll say check out madman volume one i think it's available to read for free if you have a comiXology unlimited um subscription and it's it's fantastic even the black and white stuff but uh, i just got to the color stuff and you know it's like oh when laura hops it when, when they do the fusion when the laura is fusion <laughs> dance it's a wrap uh like i said mike and laura can stand on their own but why would you want them to stand on their own when they are you know godly together no pun intended Mm. Ed, what about mm. you, man? What are you going to recommend? Uh, I'm going to recommend just the usual suspects, I guess. I really like iZombie. But recently I picked up Bug, which is their Lee and uh, Michael and Laura's tribute to Kirby. And it's a young animal imprint. And like I said, when he was talking about pitching this to uh, to, to to young animal, um, basically like every pitch involved the forager the bug somehow <laughs> but originally they wanted to do 12 issues but basically this is like a tribute to kirby and it also wraps up some of kirby's stories that never got an ending like there's omac in there they kind of mm. they kind of tie up that there's a story he did where um, one man army corps yep, they did a story where um a dead man was trapped in a robot body and uh there's a mm. kirby thing that like he didn't get to finish because he departed dc and uh like i said this uh it kind of ends where i think cosmic odyssey where he sacrifices himself because it has batman punching out orion it's like his name was forager you know punching him out and right. uh it's really very surreal very cool like i said you get to see a little bit of the fourth world stuff unfortunately dc has this weird thing about like multiple people doing fourth world stuff like tom king was doing his miracle man run so we get some of this stuff, but man, I'd love to see more Barda and, you know, Dark Side and all those guys. But you get to see them kind of in flashback, so they kind of worked around it. But it, I don't, I don't get that rule. It's like it's in, not, it's a different imprint, you know. I don't get why he can't do his thing here. But it's a awesome uh, tribute to Kirby. Like I said, it came out twenty eighteen. Um, but like I said, I anything is is worth checking out. But those are the two that probably get to the top of the list for me. Maybe they didn't trust Gerard Way. Bum, bum, bum. Mm. Ashley, isn't Gerard Way your homeboy? Like, maybe the, isn't he your homeboy? Maybe the, oh, are you, are you <laughs> homeboys with Gerard Way from <laughs> My Chemical Romance? No. Say it ain't so. Maybe, maybe. I, no. <laughs> maybe, look, you look at him in the music video for the Black Parade, and then you see him when he's doing the young animal stuff. I'm not going to try and shame anybody, but he looks like Bill Gaines the later years. Well, <laughs> can't look like that forever. So I like know. how... I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If he, as long as he's not still wearing the band leader outfit. Do no, he's got like <laughs> he's got like a hoodie on and he's got like this long hair and he's got scraggly looking beard. Like he went full on like baby Moore. Like but he does not look like Alan Real Moore. Quick, I, like he looks like Alan Moore had like hot pockets for breakfast well, every day of his life. 
<laughs> Real quick, I want to I want to highlight how <laughs> Ashley looked at me in straight disgust when I said jokingly said it's Gerard Way your homeboy. And w- <laughs> meanwhile, like, meanwhile we've we've com- you know said I don't know Denzel Washington, Al- Alan Moore, uh, every <laughs> name under the sun as her homeboy, and she's never flinched. But oh, Gerard Way cross the line gets a visceral reaction from her. She's like, I don't like that Grant Morrison hat. You know, Ashley, I'm just the whole aura of him and his like followers mm. is just it's, it's too always, much. Sometimes the fandoms will will, will ruin uh, a creator for you. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> All right. Well, listen, uh, short Max Nation. Uh, hopefully, you know we've given you plenty of homework to 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 do. You know the goal of these artist spotlights, uh, like I always say, is to celebrate and highlight the careers of comic book creators who deserve that spotlight. You know, these are people that we feel deserve their flowers. And, uh, you know, whether you came in unfamiliar with Mike and Laura Alred or or there was room for improvement as far as your knowledge base, hopefully we've helped in that journey. Um, And we'd love to hear if you end up taking any of our recommendations or if you do your own deep dive of Mike and Laura Alred and learn something new that we didn't mention, man, we'd love to hear that. Hit us up about that. On the topic of exemplary comic artists worthy of a following, there are plenty of comic legends still going strong in the industry today, including Mike and Laura Alred. Um, you know, these these legends have new projects just on the horizon, which means that I kind of want to get to talking about. Let's move on to our next segment and spotlight some new comic releases hitting stores next month. Let's go to prepare for a fistful of new comics. You can either have a mouthful of tea or a fistful of comics. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I put that whip noise in there? What is it? What is being slapped? Western it sounds weird. Slapping so some ass. Like a horse, That's maybe? Doing. <laughs> yeah. like a, it's a bullet. That's, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, I was. I think I gave say the direction of going a Western theme, but yeah. I have no idea. It's a Western. Man. You know, he kills it. Look, first person you got to resurrect is yourself. It's like rawhide. Thank you. <laughs> MC SZA, words of wisdom, once hmm? again. For the love of God, stop. Uh, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Fistful of Comics is a part of the show dedicated to all you Wednesday warriors who loyally frequent your local comic shops every week, as well as newbies looking for a little help and direction on how to spend all that hard-earned cash on only the best new titles. This segment is brought to you by Ben Kingsbury, owner of Gotham City. Kingsbury. I was waiting on that. Thank you. A little late on that one. See, let's get a little better. All right. You got to get a timing right. Hey, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I was trying to keep my daughter alive at 2.30. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, here so we go. Sorry. Here we go. You can't just use, you can't <laughs> use my my little niece as an excuse every damn time, right? My little goddaughter, right? Oh, yeah. Bada, did your feelings get hurt? <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, uh, segment brought to you by Ben Kingsbury, King, Kingsbury owner of Gotham City Limit, <laughs> Jacksonville's premier shop for comics, toys, collectibles, and more. Here we go. See, I did that for you because you had texted me that DMX text yesterday. Dude. So I was like, ow, ow. Uh, let me do that one more time real quick. Just because I want to hear it again. Here we go <laughs> Same shit, but new comics, baby. And what better person to be recommending comics than a man that owns his own comic shop? Ben has curated this week's list of top three new comics coming out next month worthy of your time and your money. So let's go and queue up the music and go through this list together. First up on his list is a mini series from Marvel. It's Iron Cat number one of five. It's written by Jed McKay and art by Pere Perez. Hope I'm saying that right. This comic proves... It doesn't matter. (laughs) We're going to keep it moving anyways. Uh, This comic proves that Iron Man is essentially the Oprah Winfrey of the Marvel Universe because he seems to be giving (laughs) out armors to any... And everybody, including criminals like Black Cat. You get a Cat. mark. You get a mark. Yeah. <laughs> you get a mark. <laughs> including criminals like Black Cat. Even she gets one. But I won't steal the, the, the thunder completely. I'll let our guy Ben uh, talk, talk a little bit more about it. I'll let Ben tell it. Iron Cat number one. The first part of a five-part series. The Iron Cat suit made its first appearance in Black Cat number 11. And we all know girls just want to have fun, but narcissist Tony Stark was having none of that and took his suit back from Felicia Harding. Now the Iron Cat suit is back, and we don't know who's in it. Tony Stark and Felicia are going to have to deal with the consequences of their past. And again, it's just a nice reminder. Life has to be lived forward, but can only be understood backwards. Ooh, I, I didn't know that we had uh, two poets 
on the, on the show today. <laughs> MC SZA might have a run for his money. Yo, my MC. No, man. It, it's all love. Word is bond, man. <laughs> Word is bond. Yo, peace to all the gods of the earth, son. Ben King, uh, MC Kingsbury out here uh, looking to Kingsbury, take your throne. keeping it real. All right, so nah, that was it. Iron Cat number one. That comes out June 29th. His next one is next up on his list is from Dark Horse Comics, all right? It's a Hellboy one-shot called Hellboy in the BPRD Old Man Whittier. It's written by Hellboy's daddy, Mike Mignola, with art by Gabriel Hernandez Walter. Let's go ahead and hear from Ben on this one. Hellboy and the BPRD is back with the Old Man Whittier one-shot from Dark Horse Comics, written by the creator of Hellboy, Mike Mignola. What's the plot? Why do you need this story? Who cares? It's literally written by a legend. And as an added bonus, Mike Mignola did a B variant cover. So Hellboy, Mike Mignola. Hopefully we set a Guinness Book of World Records for saying Mike Mignola in 30 seconds. Add it to your pull list. You don't need no other reason other than that. God damn it. You hear me? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. And last but not least on his list is also arriving all right sorry that hellboy comic comes out june 22nd and also arriving in shops june 22nd and carrying on the tradition of recent image anniversary reissues is spawn number one the 30th anniversary blank sketch cover which will count as the first time spawn has as i guess ever been reissued with a blank sketch cover so let's hear the logic behind this one (laughs) from ben please put your boner away all right (laughs) Image Comics <laughs> is doing a special reprint of Spawn number one as a 30th anniversary, and they're doing it as a blank for the first time ever. There's never been a Spawn number one blank. I'm assuming this is how you feel before you pick your first tattoo. What do I put on it? Which character do I get? What artist do I have design my cover? Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is up to you. You're going to have to make this life decision, but get your spawn number one blank and have your own cover created. Only comic book fans, especially you 90s old guys, would get hype over over a comic book with no art on the cover. <laughs> mm-hmm. Only fucking comic books could they repurpose an existing comic book that's been released thousands of times with no cover. No, I'm not too excited. I don't know. No, 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 no. Don't try to act, don't try to front this, now. This thing sucked to draw. Look, look, look. Don't be don't don't <laughs> look. We all love Ben, all right? But don't simp him now, okay? <laughs> you threw us under the bus with that 90s shit. <laughs> uh, actually, I, I want to hear a new Todd McFarlane cover. Maybe I'm interested. Now, okay. Yeah, yeah now we're talking a little fair. different. I wouldn't disrespect that. <laughs> actually, have you ever gotten a, a a sketch cover like done by another artist or have you ever done a sketch cover yourself? I used to do tons of them when I was doing all those comic book conventions. Which one that stands out? Um, but I don't think. Explain yourself, um, Ashley. No, I think um, the the Walking Dead. They used to do those blank covers, and I'd buy. I was working at the comic shop. I'd buy like ten mm. of them, oh. um, and take them to the conventions and just have people like tell me what they wanted and draw drew Pregnant them. Sonic. Um, man, I made so much money <laughs> off those. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's I was like. <laughs> <laughs> You guys haven't seen that weird God meme? dang it. <laughs> I almost put I almost put your Oh god. I almost put the sound bite from last week on uh, loaded up. I almost put your German Batman and I should have. Oh. This is the second random <laughs> shit that you said. It's, it's out there. Oh, I man. think the DMX I think DMX right after freaking pregnant Sonic is Yeah, perfect. we were setting the bar. Ashley, did you have to draw a pregnant Sonic? Or is Ed just a sicko? I <laughs> You had I think Ed was there for my first commission. That was hedgehog. that's a whole yeah, story yeah. I, in itself. And I think we, yeah. we talked about that. Pregnant that, by that now. Bonus one. But actually, what, what, <laughs> what are some of the best sketch covers that you've per- that you feel like you've personally drawn? Um. Oh, I did a a Sandman one Ooh, one time. Trying to get it. That I was actually. It was another um, convention artist that has like super nice work, and he's like, "Can you do Sandman cover?" And I was like, "Dang." So I got to make this look good. Um, I think that's probably my favorite that's one. Cool. That's cool. Do, you any, do you got a picture of it? I do on my phone somewhere. Yeah. I got to find well, whenever it. Whenever you can, send it to me and I'll, yeah. I'll post it. 
Okay, Appreciate cool. it. I'm always like, I always bring, I used to always bring blank sketch covers to cons thinking I was going to get it drawn, but then I seen the prices and I was like, you know what? This bitch is just meant to be a virgin for the rest of its life. <laughs> you would bring the sketch covers and then you'd be like, right as they're about to finish, you go, ah, 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 don't sign it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and then he just writes Padre oh. Milligan wow. Damn I've been exposed by MC oh SZA God. of all people Yeah, damn it. Look who I did <laughs> Alright y'all know the routine uh, Y'all know the drill Of those three selections that Ben has highlighted uh, Once again that was Iron Cat Number one of five uh, Hellboy and BPRD Old Man Whittier And then this Spawn number one uh, Blank sketch cover Which uh, of these three Which one gets your personal stamp of approval That's, that's a no brainer See what is it what is yeah. it? That's a no-brainer. It's the Hellboy. Come on. It's only one issue, too. Yeah, I totally, I totally one wasn't. Shot. I one totally, shot. <laughs> one shot, done. I totally wasn't gonna. Get, <laughs> I totally wasn't gonna pick Iron Cats. Duh, it's Hellboy, right? It's 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 stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> Potter's like Marvel. That's for lamos. Am I right, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Shakily brings his water bottle up. Nah, yeah, that Hellboy. I mean, you're like you can't go wrong with Mike Mignola uh, driving the ship on that still. Why are you crying? I don't know. Why are you crying? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's like one tear comes down in the shape of an M. <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm sorry. I'm just still laughing at uh, recovering from pregnant Sonic, of all things. That's just such a disturbing <laughs> image in my head. Oh, that's funny. All right. Chili dogs. <laughs> and that's the list we got for you today, Short Box Nation, for this segment. If any of those pique your interest, you know what to do. Put them on your pull list or ask your local comic shops to order it for you. Big shout outs to Ben and the Gotham City Limit Shop for the help this week. And remember, even if you don't live in Jack's, you can still shop at The Limit by visiting their online store, which is linked in this episode's show notes. Or you could shop the community marketplace for really good priced uh, comic book merchandise memorabilia on the WhatNot app. With that out the way, next up we got some fan mail, which kind of relates to uh, the, the topic of, of conventions and kind of sketch covers a little bit. Uh, we got some fan mail in regards to that. Uh, and we'll also share our top entertainment picks for the week. But first, we'll go on a quick music break. I, I couldn't help but uh, have Peyton Locke in the forefront of my mind this week, especially since the song we played on the George Prez Artist Spotlight episode from last week was Willie Evans uh, was a Willie Evans tribute to Peyton Locke. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, Peyton Locke is a uh, fantastic, or was a fantastic uh, hip-hop artist yeah. um, you know, from our hometown here in Jacksonville, Florida, but he's gone on to do tours all around the world and well-respected around the world. Uh, he transitioned from this world in 2019, uh, but earlier this year, his label, Full Plate, put out his first official posthumous album. It's called Americancer, uh, the first of a pair of albums that Peyton actually left behind. And with the blessing of the label head himself, Dylan Marr, uh, I'm going to play the lead single from the album in honor of Peyton Locke. This one is called Oodles of Nas. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back, all right? All right. Uh, you guys get to continue going? Uh, I w I'd say, yeah. Ashley, you good? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I'm good. And see, I sent you both um, emails. We'll start with Trey's nice. and then we'll do T Mix. I see him. Okay. All right. And the first one is uh, Vacation Season? Yeah, Vacation Season. And uh, just a heads up, he he does his normal outro where he does, like, injects the rap lyrics in it. So that actually might work with your MC SZA persona you got going no on. No problem. I'll, I will mess it up. <laughs> do so. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Yo, and we're back, Short Box Nation. Once again, the song you just heard was done by the late, great Peyton Locke. It's called Oodles of Nas, off his first official posthumous album, Americancer. The album is available for streaming as well as purchase, including digital and physical copies like vinyl. I have a link to support in the show notes. Rest in peace to Peyton Locke, and a big shout out to the Full Plate family. Thank you guys so much for letting me play that. Uh, we got some emails to read. Like I said, prior to going on break, one of them is all about con season. So I'm going to pass it over oh to boy. our boy, MC SZA, to do the honors of sharing these emails. What we got, C? Sure. Well, we got one from Trey Namo, friend of the show. Uh, his email is called Megacon slash Vacation Season Fire. Uh, what up, Shortbox crew? It's basically summertime, so... You know what that means. It's officially vacay and Comic-Con season. I'm currently taking some vacation days to go to Megacon for the first time. Oh, a first timer. Oh, okay. As well as heading down to the Keys for a week. Hashtag ballin, LOL. <laughs> Glasses emoji, crying, laughing emoji, champagne glass emoji. A lot of, he's an, I have to read all this He's out. an emoji loving motherfucker. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> he is. Is there one with the uh, signs flying away? <laughs> no. I, what, where's that one at? You're slacking, Trey. Come on. 
With that being said, I'd love to hear some personal stories of cons uh, y'all took vacation time to go to. That's the best way to describe that shit. Because ain't hmm. anyway. Um, thanks for the awesome episodes lately, and as always, in a minute, I'm gonna need a sentimental man or woman to pump me up, feeling fussy, walking in my balance, Um Trying to bring out the fabulous, or whatever, Butter sign off is. Trey Nama. I know Trey tries um, to inject the rap lyrics just to, you know, get me to smile or, or wink, but <laughs> the way they read. Oh, I love reading them wrong because the way that they're I'm, the way that they're on the uh, the <laughs> Gmail is hilarious. It ain't mm-hmm. like iambic pentameter, kids. Okay, let's just say that. All right. But he writes. Also, congrats to C and his wife hey. on welcoming their baby into the world. Heart emoji. Another dollar flying Cheers. away emoji. <laughs> beers, uh, beers clinking emoji with a little heart. Nice. Yeah, that's like $500 sign emojis flying away. Um, now, thanks, man. I appreciate that. I really do. Yeah. Now, that was real quick. That was part one of the email. So I had seen that email. You know, Correct. I sent him a text, said, hey, man, you know, congrats on going to your first MegaCon. How about you email me afterwards? Because oh, nice. I would love to hear what, how the convention was. So he sent a follow up email that I'd like see to, uh, to get to. Okay, here we go. <laughs> this is the this is the re- Megacon recap twenty twenty two. I think a day apart is about about it. Yeah, so I would say like the maybe the first, uh, the first email is more or less a mm, a summer mixtape mm. made by a fresh faced young botter in high Ooh, school who okay. was listening to Drake and just in a really nice a little place before then. But okay, this is- <laughs> <laughs> timeline a little off. Okay, I like it. This is a uh, this is. <laughs> Butter in my mind, you're perpetually uh, 18, um, <laughs> and you're still shaving your widow's okay. peak. Uh, <laughs> what? This is. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to hear it. All right, I'm not gonna. There's pictures. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's pictures. pictures. I got it. I got there's it. pictures. <laughs> um, Stop exposing my personal life. Right? There's bad mistakes. Bro, you got days. that sweet line. Bro, you had the sweet I, line. Just read the goddamn email. Read the damn email. All right. <laughs> so this says Mega Count Recap 2022. So first one, Happy Summer Mixtape. This one, you're going to need like uh, Immortal Technique playing in the background. And some hard liquor. Um, right. So we just left Megacon, and I can officially say I love the products they have at big cons, but I hate everything else involved. <laughs> we got some killer deals on some sick art pieces. And Riley, my old lady, got some steals on some older Pokemon packs and other related things. But oh my God, everything else sucked. <laughs> The ticket booths, the parking took three hours plus, even though we were an hour early. Sounds about right. The lanes in between the vendors were smaller than Botter's DC knowledge. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good line. I, I'll admit, that, that was a good bar. This guy's got That's bars, good man. That's a good days. Damn. And I think every friend group that came there all decided to block every lane we were walking down. <clears throat> also, I got whacked in the face by a Doc Ock cosplayer tentacle and got yelled at for messing up her tentacle with my face. LOL. <laughs> all in all, I'd have to give it a set. Well, I mean, he's Dr. Octopus. He's not a good yeah. guy, all right? Uh, she was in character, maybe. Maybe. Uh, all in all, I'd have to give it a 7 out of 10 and would recommend. Just keep your head on the swivel when you're around cosplayers. Uh, shout out to at Jed Thomas, at Hand Over the Hero, and at Calabunga Comics for the dope deals. Good stuff. Good stuff. Trey Namo. Big shout out to, uh, uh, to Kyle and Calabunga uh, Comics, too. I'm glad cool. to hear that they were at MegaCon. But yeah. Do you guys have any weird uh, con experiences? Everything he described in that he's, last yeah, email, it, right. it kind of gave me flashbacks. I was like, oh, so the, 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 oh, the, the alleyways between the tables are still narrow as hell, mm-hmm. and there's congestion like, every single yeah. time. PTSD flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. Oof. It was a three-hour wait. I had... Um, oh, good. Actually, good. Yeah. No, my, um, I was waiting in line with my friend to get Matt Fraction to sign something, and uh, I don't know if I've told this story before, but just a very... Um, Amazonian like Wonder Woman cosplayer oh. ran through the line and stepped on his foot and caught her heel on the top of his foot and broke oh, his God. foot. Jesus. Has at Heroes all the way in Charlotte. Oh, at Damn. Heroes? Oh. Wow. Damn. 
So I have a Charlotte a Heroes Con. Hey, we'll go, story go, real too. quick, we're not shit on a Heroes Con. I'm doing a panel there. No, I'm not. Shit, <laughs> I'm not shitting on it I'm at all. Kidding, I'm, I think it, this is not a reflection of the con itself. This is a reflection of the patrons. Um, I remember trying to find Roger Corman's Fantastic Four, mm. uh, which we did a whole uh, yeah. thing on. Uh, and I had it in my hands, and I kid you not, this is not freaking i obviously we're talking about me here i'm very hyperbolic i i i definitely exaggerate for the sake of a joke this is a hundred percent true and as warren fucking bard of darkness as my witness i will swear on his life this really happened dude if you're listening this for real fucking happened there was a guy next to me who unironically looked exactly like comic book guy from the simpsons Mm. i'm not fucking kidding he looked exactly, oh my God, I could see it in my mind. It's so freaking crazy. And he was just sitting there and he saw that I had like this bootleg in my hand of the Fantastic <laughs> Four. And I'm like, mm, I don't know. They're asking a lot for this. He looks over at it and he goes, Ch, worst FF movie ever. <laughs> like that. Worst ever. I, like, I was just kind of, I, I promise you, I did one of these. <laughs> it's... Actually, probably the best final Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> I just, I was just kind of like, I, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm in another world now. Was he dressed? Like, I needed an adult. Was he was literally like short sleeve shirt? Oh, he was like dressed like jean. Okay. Like, like he wasn't cosplaying. Uh, yeah, I know Ryan. Like that was his thing. Like balding, ponytail, everything. Like it was. Oh man, I, I'm I'm still got flashbacks. Like, oh my god, shaking, man. It's, shakes. It's, it's freaking me out. Like just talking about it. Like I'm like, man, you know, everybody talks about like, oh, Simpsons dead at like like they did it in real life, like for real. Ed, have you ever taken uh, anyway. any vacation time to hit up a MegaCon? Not really vacation time. I remember getting my tax return. And I was oh, like, I guess I'm yeah. going to MegaCon. Oh. Came right. Damn, baller. that's a good point. Like, because Meg- I checked my check the ATM. I was like. Going to MegaCon. So it was like a same day <laughs> drive down, which was yeah. horrible because I thought Saturday shouldn't be too bad, like getting down to Orlando. It uh. sucks all, every day of the week. Because you no. got to get off, uh, <laughs> what's the main road, the exit you got to get off for MegaCon? International, International Drive. Drive. Yeah. It was even before mm. that. The traffic was bad, even yeah. uh, getting into Orlando. I was like, yeah. what the F is going on? Oh, yeah. God. And there's <laughs> just the trek, because I'll, I'll disparage MegaCon. <laughs> I think me and um one of my friends she was it we actually had to walk it was quicker to walk from our hotel to the convention center because the traffic was gridlocked because there was like three or four conventions going on because there's that cluster of convention centers there so like the the little like the trolleys that come you know they wouldn't even pull into that side lane to Pick you up. They're just like, get in, get it. Like we're in war. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're not pulling yeah. over because we it's, won't be able to get back on the road because they have that little yo, the last... side thing, you know. They wouldn't be able to get back in, and so she had to, yeah, take her heels off and hoof it to, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> like a mile. <laughs> Blythe, Blythe had seen the um, the lineup uh, for this year's MegaCon, which I believe is like all of the original, a lot of the original actors for. Um, uh, Lord of the Rings. The Hobbit. Yeah, The Hobbit. Yeah, wow. <laughs> the Lord of the Rings. And stuff, she got yeah. so mad. She was like, "How did you not let me know? Like, oh, no. I, I, we we should have went. We should have went." But she's yelling, or she's not yelling, but she is telling me how we made such a mistake in not going. But the whole time, I was just, I had like, uh, like PTSD. You don't know what it's like. Yeah, I was like, you just, you just don't understand. <laughs> yeah, you don't fucking understand. Yeah, those lines Look. are crazy. Yeah, like it, it's, it's. You bad. have never it's felt bad. more like a, a sardine until you go to MegaCon. And and Ed, it's actually kind of funny because MegaCon used to happen earlier, yeah. like during tax return season. Yeah, yeah. And that was my time to go, baby. <laughs> time to spend this money on shit I don't need. Because I used to stop like buying back issues like at the beginning of the year. Because then I started like my MegaCon list. Yeah. Um. And before you used to be able to find a lot of like the comic books you wanted. Like it was more comic centric. But as it you know really uh, got popular and. You know, the shift became more about movies and television stars. And anime. Yeah, and anime. And uh, $500 autographs and, Ugh. you know, $200 picture opportunities. And oh, all my that. God. So, anyways, Trey, I'm glad that, you know, you still uh, made the best of it. And thank you so much for that follow-up email. Uh, we got one more email to read, and that's from our boy, T-Mix. I figure why not save the best for last. See, what, oh, see what's he got to say today? Sure. Uh, this is from our boy T-Mix. It says, George Perez 2. 
mispronunciation boogaloo. <laughs> Andy writes, Yeah. What up, Shortbox? I see how it is. You either email once and be the hero, or you email too often and see yourself become a villain. <laughs> I guess it's time to hang it up. No. Anywho. I had recently been going through all of the Artist Spotlight episodes, as they are my absolute favorite. And it was great that y'all re-released the George Perez episode again. When it first came out, I went back and reread Crisis and Infinity Gauntlet. But this time around, I'm inspired to read his Teen Titans runs. Ah, see, yeah, Poppy, that's how you do it. Yeah, um, Poppy. Speaking, oh, speak, you <laughs> shut up. That's our word. Um, <laughs> speaking of which... <laughs> Speaking of which, maybe Young Justice could be a pilot's license episode, as I've often read read it, that its humor feels more as if Teen Titans than its source material would, rather than the Young Justice comic series. First off, don't don't try and produce anything on this show ever again. <laughs> okay. You stay in your lane. You, you you make light with the emails, all right? You keep the production to I don't yourself. Know. I, th- Thank I think he's just following. Thank you. You're right. You're right. Thank You're right. Sorry, you. Sorry, I got to take, take my side. I got to take C-side. Thank you. Um, his, he, he continues. Another chance to pay homage once again to the late, great George Perez. Time for some champions. One, Godzilla versus Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Issue three drops this week and has been a ton of fun to read. Uh... Big G has thrown down with uh, both the Dragon Zord and the Megazord. I'm I'm interested, yeah. Two, Jason Aaron's King Conan run. Ha <laughs> ha, not anymore. <laughs> um, I picked up issue one after recently replaying the Frazetta Spotlight. King nice. Conan is my first Conan book, and it's been fantastic. Uh, just masterful storytelling. Speaking of, uh, if you... A little bit of trivia for you, T-Mix. Um, Robert E. Howard's very first Conan story is a story called The Phoenix on the Sword, and it's the first time Conan appears, he's already an old man. He's already a king of Aquilonia. So short, it's interesting. I suggest you, I recommend that. Uh, He goes, hasta la proxima, cabrones. E. Ashley. (laughs) T-Mix. So respectful. P.S. Just kidding. I'll write to y'all next week. I can't let y'all off that easily. Ed, who never watched Cobra Kai. Keep it geeky. Still haven't. (laughs) <laughs> and there's your sign your status update <laughs> what the hell a Bill Hangful reference wait wait Ashley did you end, did you ever end up watching <laughs> hold on no no we're not going to skate over <laughs> that it. I had no idea if Bonner was such a stand just, uh, for the blue collar yeah, it's like <laughs> the blue collar comedy tour VIP tickets <laughs> you might be a, you might be a redneck if your name is Bonner Milligan <laughs> I feel like he'd probably say like, you might be a terrorist if your name is Bonner Milligan <laughs> but, <laughs> No. no, it just means you're a very, very well-to-do soccer player in France somewhere. Thank you so much. He's more of a Larry the Cable guy. Got Actually, I, I like the <laughs> other guy, I, I like the other guy that that used to drink and smoke on on stage. I can't recall his name right now. No, no, no. You can't yeah, say I'm everybody like everybody likes Ron White. On, you Ron can't say dude. You literally just said, "Here's your I know because I you know because I knew this would evoke lie. this joke out of you. And I, you know, I, lo- I like hearing your interpretation of the blue collar comedy tour. <laughs> Anyways, Ashley, did you ever get around to uh, watching, um, uh, what was it? What was she supposed to watch? Karate Kid, right? Man, this guy's throwing a whole forest of shade right now. Karate Kid. I know. I think we're forgetting about the important thing, which is that Ed did not watch Cobra Kai. Good way to deflect. Good way. We've taught you well. We've taught you well. No, she's deflected back to you. Oh. Anyways. I don't even remember. (laughs) I don't care about it so much. Look, (laughs) T-Mix ain't letting that one go. T-Mix ain't letting that one go. Uh, we'll see, T-Mix, we'll see about getting you an update, and I'll see what I can do about doing a pilot's license episode on Young Justice. We'll see. We'll see if I can get it past, you know, uh, the head it's, honcho. It's, it is good. It I is wouldn't good. mind doing one on uh, Young Justice. That'd be a pretty cool episode. It's dark, though, and it's super serious. Right that that show alley. weighs a lot of, man, it weighs a lot when you watch it. You're like, oh, mm. oh God. pretty good things. All right, well, T-Mix, thank you so much for that email. Another big shout-out to Trey and T-Mix for, the, uh, for writing in. Those are our emails for today, Shortbox Nation. We'd love to have some more to read next episode. Right into the show by clicking the link by clicking the link in this episode's show notes or writing a short email and sending it to our inbox at theshortboxjacks at gmail.com. While you do that, we're going to move on to our next segment and tell you about the best entertainment options we've personally enjoyed this week. It's time for our champion season. Champion season. 
Champion season is the part of the show where we highlight other worthwhile entertainment like movies, TV series, books, video games, and anything else we personally recommend to our friends, just like you and the rest of the Short Box Nation. Um, Ash. Can I go first? Oh, uh, go. Here's why. I, I'm going to have to bounce in a little bit, guys. I got to give the baby a bottle and uh, relieve Sarah. So. Okay, we're going to go first. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm going to tell you, I really liked Doctor Strange. I know you guys already kind of did a uh, review, and I had to bug out because of spoilers. Um, I It was one of the few things I got to do with my wife while my parents got a chance to spend time with their granddaughter. And we felt like human beings again. <laughs> we went into the movie theater. We had our popcorn. We're like, ah. I'm surprised I just um, didn't catch up on sleep in that like nice, cold, dark uh, theater. It was so <laughs> tempting. But that's... That's a testament to the uh, the the visual right. masterwork of Sam Raimi. So I uh, I'm gonna champion uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, not because I'm a stand for the MCU. I'm a stand for Sam Raimi. So that's where I'm at. Well said. I and like it. I love you guys. I will uh, I will see you on the flip flop as it all were. Right, peace out. MC says I'm looking forward to the album. Right. Peace and love to all the gods of the earth. Yo, man. That's where it's at, man. I like you. I like the way you think, Potter. You finally come to like you've embraced it. It took me like the whole show, but like I'm like a I'm like a fucking uh, sip a cup of death. Or, or more when you're like shaking a, my fucking right hand, I stab you with the left. I, I caught that one too. I like the Wu Tang reference, you're, but I was gonna say you more like a who, who said it? Who said it? Uh, that would have been you know who you know who <laughs> it, uh, RZA. Think about RZA. it. Who's all about like being crazy and killing oh, people? Oh, fucking Ghostface. ODB, oh, bro. Wow. Well, actually, I, I guess you know with, with that clue, they, it could have been, all, been them. all of them. That's but I true. See what you're you right. Mean, ODB. I was gonna say you're more like you know a festering, uh, oh, you know, festering wart that I've just decided to live with instead of going to go seek uh, medical attention. So, you know what, buddy, you're gonna die alone. <laughs> so I'll see you later. <laughs> I leave you with one last thing, Cesar. When you go to bed What's tonight, up? I want you to think. Pregnant Sonic. All right. That's what I want you to go to sleep. God to. damn it. Gross. Peace out, see. Ew. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right. Uh, Ashley, I'm going to go to you. What are you going to champion this week? Um, I've got two things this week. Um, so, third season of Barry started oh, a couple weeks shit, ago. Um, it, did. it is so good. And if you like those um, like drama comedies where you just see a character just like unravel, it's. It's perfect, and it's the episodes are so short, so I'm always like, I just want more, but it's so funny. I think it's one of my favorite shows, and I think we had to wait like two or three years in between seasons. I, I can't recall if I'm confusing it for Atlanta, oh, um, but I know Atlanta was like four years. I want to say Barry was almost just as long, but you're right. It's been, it's been a significant mm-hmm. wait for season three to the point I forgot. I kind of forgot about Barry, um, but I'm yeah. looking forward to see because <laughs> the first two seasons, to your point, was – like some of the best television I, I've, I've ever watched. So you're saying season three like mm-hmm. was worth the wait? Oh, oh yeah, it's it's, like... it's so good. I think the fourth episode comes out tonight. Oh okay, I got plenty to catch up on. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. You got anything else, champion? Um, the other thing is, um, it's called the most important comic book on earth. It's like a uh, stories to save the world. It has like all these famous people that got together just to write short stories. Um, and all the proceeds go to like all these really cool, like wildlife federations oh, cool. and Greenpeace and stuff like that. Um, so just a couple of the names are Ricky Gervais, Taika Waititi, uh, Robert Kirkman, Cliff Chang, Alan Moore. Um, I, I saw it at the comic shop and I was like, I got to grab this because um, I, I mean, Taika Watiti's like one of my favorite people alive. Um, unfortunately, he has a one page story oh. that he co-wrote with two other wow. people. <laughs> That's a sweet gig. <laughs> um, yeah, all time you got. So don't get it if you're just getting it for that. But um, uh, there's just some really like beautiful stories in there. And it's a big book, too. Um, and I for- it's only a thirty dollar book. And this thing is like. This thing is thick. It's got like uh, 340 pages in it. Damn. That looks... Yeah. So I'd say it's worth yeah, it. Yeah, this cover looks awesome. I was, I'm looking at the cover right now. It looks really cool. Good mm-hmm. pick. That's a really interesting pick. Thank you, Ashley. <clears throat> All right, Ed, what about you, man? What are you going to champion today? I'm going to champion... Uh, this isn't saving anybody. Um, I'm going to champion the uh, <laughs> Midnight Pulp app. It's a streaming app of like a lot of B-movies, uh, anime, mm-hmm. exploitation... Um, 
they have streaming specific channels, but you can also pick. So if you ever wanted to see um, Bikini Bloodbath Car Wash, this is the app for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> some nun exploitation, uh, Ebola Rex, some crazy weird dinosaur movies. So pretty much all the weird bad trash cinema stuff is a uh, is at your fingertips. Um, there is a like I said, a premium level, but there's a lot of free stuff on there too. So it's it's a pretty cool, fun app. What's a what's a B movie that you just finished watching on it? I just watched this um, the uh, this anime movie called uh, by Madhouse, which I love, um, called Hells, and it's about this girl. It's weird. It's hard to explain, but it's like a uh, girl who dies going to school, like gets hit by a bus, and then wakes up in this hell high school type area then it goes into this weird Cain and Abel storyline and it's it's so bizarre lots of crazy really cool visuals if you like any of the madhouse anime stuff it's I recommend it it's a bit long so I probably watch it in chunks hmm. I think it was like episodic and they just kind of put it all together got you know it, for a movie because you can see where the cuts are for like breaks and stuff um but yeah I just downloaded this a few days ago so that's a great app they yeah. got an app for everything man yep all right. You got anything else? Nope. That's it. Awesome. All right. I got two champions. Uh, one kind of following along the lines of, of comic uh, anthologies. Uh, the first one is Wizard, the comic super ultra magazine number two. If you follow us on Instagram, uh, you may have seen a video I posted where I was flipping through this book. Uh, but our friends over at Cosmic Lion Production, big shout out to Eli Schwab and the entire Cartoonist Cafe Bringside Seats Facebook community. They put out another volume of their wizard and, and uh, cartoons kayfabe inspired comics anthology. The book is 420 pages, and, and that's equates to, I guess, to almost like five pounds. The book is almost five pounds of just straight comic related insanity. It's, it's, they, they, they're advertising it as the ultimate giant size exaltation of comics, new and old. Uh, they've got interviews, write ups, and original comics all done by, uh, um, you know, all done by the creators and indie <coughs> creators. Um, and fans of comics. Uh, if you if you order one, sorry, you can order one from the Cosmic Line Production website for thirty five bucks. But I'd highly recommend shelling out for the foil variant, which is just ten dollars more, but it looks great. Uh, and don't be surprised uh, if we announce a giveaway for one very soon. I've already reached out to Eli and, and congratulated him on on all the hard work. It looks great, man. Like just the the amount of respect that I have for Eli and that whole community, and you know the editors involved in this. Is, is immense. The fact that you are coordinating, you know, uh, taking in work, you know, comic uh, work and interviews and articles from all these different people from around the world, you know, um, and making one anthology is definitely something to praise. So big shout outs to them and, and definitely check out the Wizard magazine for yourself. <clears throat> the next thing I'll champion is a movie and that is Ford versus Ferrari. I finally caught it on TV uh, yesterday. Um, it is a, a 2019 movie. It stars Christian Bale, Matt Damon, uh, Katrina Balfe, uh, and John Bernthal. It's directed by James Mangold, and it is based on a true story. Um, you guys might have seen the, the, the trailers for it before, but the plot of the film takes place in the 60s, and it revolves around a team of American and British automobile engineers hired by Ford to design a race car that can defeat a Ferrari sports car at the 1966 24 Hours of Le Mans uh, race in France. Uh, Matt Damon plays uh, automotive designer Carol Shelby, which you know we're probably all familiar with, especially with the Mustang. And Christian Bale plays British race car driver Ken Miles. You don't have to be a car uh, fanatic or, or buff to enjoy the movie, even though it probably helps. But there's a lot of nuance and then character moments. Um, you know, uh, in addition to you know watching fast cars race laps, even though that is really cool to watch. So if you can catch Ford first. Ford versus Ferrari on TV, or I think it's streaming on Hulu and, and like YouTube. Um, worth the watch, man. If you, yeah, if you like um, The Martian, I, I, it kind of feels like The Martian, but for cars. So uh, I had a oh, good time watching that. That's so strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, like, uh, <laughs> well, The Martian was like, you know, very kind of like analytical, like very kind of like it, it portrayed like science in a, a rather like mm. consumable way, right? Like uh, oh, what Matt okay. Damon was doing on Mars in a very sexy, cool way. And I think they do that with Ford versus Ferrari where Engineering it's like, and, like yeah, design. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it, it doesn't go over your head is what I'm getting yeah. at. Okay. But I guess at face value, it does sound like a weird <laughs> comparison. <laughs> but that's what I got a champion today. So in short box nation, I want to say, uh, in short box nation, I invite you, if you got a killer champion that we should check out, 
share it with us, or tell us if you try any of the recommendations we shared today. We, we would love to hear your thoughts on uh, what Mike and Laura Alred mean to you. If, if you're someone that's been following their career for years now, man, feel free to chime in. Maybe we missed something that you want to highlight. Um, do so, right? Right into the short, right into the uh, show by sending us a short email to our inbox at theshortboxjacks at gmail.com, and we'll read it next episode. You're also in luck because as I wrap up, we are now, this will be the inaugural episode where we introduce a dedicated segment oh. for our girl Ashley, all right? Going forward, the last segment of the show will be this brand new one that we're introducing today. It's called Ashley's Idea. <laughs> Ashley, I got to figure out a, a cool sound bump or, or something to go here. Um, but we've always done Fancy. these last couple episodes. I've tried to do like parting words and words of wisdom and mm-hmm. really try to close out the show on a positive note. Uh, only to be shit on by Cesar and Ed and they don't seem to enjoy the segment as much. But you know who does a great <laughs> job at parting words and usually has the best words of wisdom is Ashley. Oh. I always enjoy uh, your take and some of the, uh, the the comedy you get to insert um, to, to close this out. So, Ashley, I'm going to turn it over to you. What are some parting words you want to give the listeners, or, or did you learn anything new that you want to share? So, um, I just wanted to start by saying, if you met your spouse at work, I apologize for the beginning of the episode. It was ah. kind of hard to hear. Um, I did not know about all those statistics. You didn't um, meet Josh at work. But... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, but if you, you know, the thing is, it's about like a very recognizable style and the two people that it took to make that style. Um, so I think that this was definitely a very important episode because it shows that like you can make it like true love does exist and it makes beautiful artwork. Uh, Ashley, thank you so much for saving that. <laughs> like, I, I think I think that's what I need to rename this show is. Ashley saving the show from my very uh, uh, jarring intros. Thank you. You're like, uh, you're like Shortbox PR. You know what? You are officially been promoted to become the Shortbox uh, PR team, all right? Oh. All right. Good words. Thank you so much, Ashley. Uh, I just want to let you know that the job does not come with any benefits and no pay raises, so thank you so much for taking that, on, that extra work on. Yeah. Full free. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it, Short Box Nation. Thank you for hanging out with us this week, but it's time to close out the show. We'll actually be taking a real break these next uh, uh, two weeks. I got some vacation lined up, and I think we're definitely do uh, just a little more, you know, a little more downtime, right? But we'll be back later in June with some new episodes. One you'll want to come back for is a comic book spotlight where our very own Ashley has picked out the comic. Um, Ashley, do you want to share the, the, the theme of the next comic spotlight and the, the three options we'll be presenting to our patrons to pick from? Yeah, um, so I just wanted to do some more, you know, not big two comics, and um, I kind of was looking into, like, Lady Assassins, uh, oh. and there's been some pretty good stuff out, so um, the choices are uh, Pretty Deadly, mm-hmm. um, Sarah uh, by TKO Comics, and Lady Killer. Good choices. Ooh. Good choice. I'm a big fan of a lot of those, but Sarah definitely piqued my interest when you when you sent that through. So... Mm-hmm. Lady Assassins will be the theme of next month's wow. Comic Spotlight. Our Patreon subscribers will get to vote on those three topics, and, and one of them will be the subject of that episode. But if you can't wait that long to hear from us or that episode, or if you're impatient to hear that episode, sorry. but if you can't wait that long from here to hear from us, we did drop a special bonus episode earlier this month called Comic Shop Stories Volume 1, which is all about Ed and Ashley, Ed and Ashley's time working at a comic shop and them sharing the good, the bad, and the ugly side of working in comic retail. You can listen to that and all of our Patreon-exclusive episodes when you sign up for our Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash the short box and support the podcast for as little as a dollar. We'd appreciate it a lot, right? In the meantime, give us a follow on social media if you aren't following us already. But most importantly, take care of yourselves. Have a great day, and please continue to make mine and yours short box. We'll talk to you soon. Peace. <laughs>